so we've got this big mamma jamma, I don't know, we'll call it a buffet that we're going to be turning into our entertainment center under this big TV here that I'm going to be building a frame for about $40. I spent about $500 on the buffet, but here's the deal. Zeb has a ginormous TV, and so finding something that would fit underneath it was not an easy task. So we're gonna try to make this new buffet look old. We're gonna cut these feet off. We're also gonna get this metal detail out of here. It looks good, but it doesn't really fit our style, so we're gonna remove it. I'm gonna be using Sweet Pickens in Moody Blue. It's an all natural milk paint. I've got one part warm water to one part milk paint. I put a blender ball in there. You might not be able to see it, but I promise it's there. It's gonna help us mix up this paint. Boop. It's all mixed up. I'm gonna let it sit and thicken and let some of the bubbles settle down. For starters, we're gonna get these hinges off. I think I'm only gonna pull them off one side because we're actually not painting the inside of this. We're just gonna paint the outside. To purchase the paint and products you see us use today, visit jamierayvintage.com. All right, so we are two-toning this. We've decided to leave the inside dark natural wood. We're gonna leave the top natural wood so that way it ties together. We're gonna leave the doors off so that way we can display maybe some ironstone in here eventually, a bunch of quilts, and then we will hide the speaker above, kind of in the back where you won't really see that because we've got a big long speaker. So for now, we've decided to leave the doors off. I'm okay with the holes on here just because nobody's gonna really see them and I want it to look like an old cabinet, but I am going to paint over where the wood is light so that way it's not as noticeable. I'm just using DIY's Dark and Decrepit. It has a built-in sealer. I'll let that dry, I'll do a second coat, and unless somebody comes stick their eyeballs right here, they're not gonna know that there were hinges. When you're going to frame out your TV, we have it in the other video, but it's old and you know, I'm gonna show you again now. So carefully, so as not to scratch your screen, measure exactly the exterior dimensions. So this is exactly 72 inches wide by 41 tall. So I need to be able to fit my frame around that and then I need about three inches on each side with my frame, that way I can have a box around the outside and the frame around it has air to move so you don't overheat your TV. You can drill holes underneath too. Yeah. I probably should. The last time I did this, I had a bunch of old salvage wood that was about the right length that I needed to make the frame. I don't have that this time around. I'm using this bead board. It's essentially double beaded pine. I'm gonna add three inches on each side to those lengths that I had. So 72, so I'm gonna go 78 because I'm gonna add three inches for my width. And then I'm also going to add uh, three inches for each side of the frame. So I'm gonna go 47. So 78 and 47 are what I, where I need the corners of my miters to be. I'm gonna be using these one by fours for the interior of the frame. This is what goes up against the wall and what hangs over there. So this is what I'm going to be using here. So this needs to be, so this is the 78. This frame is pretty big, so I'm just going to lay it out right here on the concrete and nail it up. I'm using my 15 gauge nailer. If you don't have a nailer like this, you could easily just use regular nails and a hammer. You could also screw it together. If you're going to do that, I would use a pilot hole on that so that you don't split your wood. Okay, we've got our frame here. Now we're gonna add a little bit of strength because right now it wants to bow and sag because this is 78 inches long. So when I cut the beadboard, I want the inside of the miter cut right here, this spot here, all the way across to the bottom, if that's my bottom of my frame. I want this to be the actual measurement of the TV. And to measure the end of a miter by yourself so I'm just measuring the edge of the table I'm gonna line it up right there so I marked where I needed my cut to be right here at the table so this is gonna be my 45 going up out of there when I'm marking miters I always do a little dog leg over that way I know which direction my miter needs to be 
So I know you're gonna be like, Zeb, what are you doing? But for this part of the frame, I'm using some pretty heavy cardboard in the corner, glue, and a half inch handheld stapler. I was gonna use these triangles, but they were way too thick. The staples weren't hardly even going through them. Now I'm gonna use an 18 gauge nailer because the 15 gauge is way overkill on this and this is more of a finished nail. Because we're inside the house, I don't wanna use the orbital sander, but I do wanna just stress it, smooth out the paint a little bit. So I've got a damp rag. Now careful, when you do this, it could activate the paint, especially if there's bond in it. Um, and just so you know, if your piece is really shiny or you're worried about it sh chipping, you can add bond to it. But you can see as I rub this, it's starting to chip off. Down here, I'm just gonna rub where it would naturally wear. And I like it because milk paint doesn't like get streaky per se. It just kind of like, I don't know, like randomly chips off. This is not like an uber chippy piece, which I'm okay with but I do want some distress on there. I'm gonna get the heat gun. I don't think I'm gonna get it to chip or anything, but sometimes. Looks like this is the amount of distress that we're gonna get. We do have some weird, like random chippy stuff happening. And know that as it dries naturally, sometimes it will chip after you've wet distressed it. But I think it looks pretty good. Should we have cut the feet off before we brought it inside? Yes, but we didn't. So here we are gonna cut the feet off and uh, this little vacuum here is magical. It has great suction. It's going to get all the sawdust right on up. I thought these were all one piece, but I think they're just doweled in to this board on the bottom. I'm going to see if I can just hit these out with a hammer instead of cutting them off. Now to fix the nail problem, because we can't put it down on the floor like this, these are just channel locks. And it's just a finish nail on the top here. First step is gonna be old and gray. We're gonna gray out this wood and make it look old. And then we're gonna layer on some chippy paint. Old and gray is all natural with a built-in sealer. So I just brush it on and instant age. Look, you can see my little baby grass coming up in that patch that didn't come in good. It's recovering from uh, construction. And then now we have the pool coming in. I'm like, please don't drive on my grass. Yeah, that, that's, that half over there is starting to look real good. I know, it's looking awesome. Salt wash, leftover milk paint. I'm gonna chunkify this up, give it some texture. I'm not getting a clean brush because I don't care. Use the brush to stir it. It's the golden rule of chippy paint slash age. Slash. If you got crusty stuff on your brush, run with it. When it starts to get hard to stir, when it's good. No peaks, you're just gonna brush it, huh? I'm just gonna brush it and then maybe I'll stipple it. I'm just gonna slap it on there. Next step, I'm just painting DIY white swan right over the top. I'm not worried about perfection. You're gonna go a little drier, more like a dry brush on this? No, just if a little bit pokes out like that, I'm just gonna leave it because I'm gonna distress it pretty heavy. Orbital sander with 220 sandpaper and I'm gonna go ahead and distress this and see what happens. Now I'm just going to come wet distress and bring back some of that old and gray that was underneath. Okay, so tragedy struck last night. We were moving the TV because this buffet was a little bit taller, so we had to move it up, right? And I dropped the TV. I thought it was on the hanger, but 
it was just sitting kind of resting on the top. It wasn't latched down in on the mount and it slipped off and it also <laughs> it took our Alexa cord. It broke the TV, snapped the Alexa cord in half. So we, we put it back on thinking, let's plug it in and see. Maybe it's just a cosmetic damage. Yeah, 80% of but, the TV works. Let's see, let's show you what the cosmetic damage is to this situation. <laughs> So yeah. over there is all black and lines in it, you know. But that's all right because, you know, crap happens. <laughs> we were pretty nice to each other. We weren't filming when it happened. Yeah, and, that's a good thing. <laughs> and yeah, so now we got a new TV coming. So apparently the $40 frame wasn't really that much of a savings. You know, when you're making your frame, if you got to move your TV, be careful. Maybe that's get somebody stronger advice. than me. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was really me. No, it was up there and hanging and I thought it was on and it wasn't and I backed away and it <laughs> fell. The good news is we went to Sam's Club this morning, we told them our story and we got a discount on a bigger, better TV and it ended it up being less than this because it was the floor model. So there we go. And I'm going to try to set it up there. I'm recording it and documenting it this time because I feel like I'm more careful if it's being documented. I feel like we should put like a mattress underneath it or something, some pillows. <laughs> All right, am I high enough? Yes, you are high enough. Do I need to let it down? Yeah, you can. Oh, you were there. Let it down. At least on my side. Okay, my side's on. Sweet. All right, now it does the frame fit the new TV. All right, I need you to stand back and let me know when I'm centered on stuff. And I'm going to hold this up. I have to hang the bracket on here. And it needs to be low enough that the remote still works with the TV. Okay, is just... that, that works? Okay, to hang this, I just need this old scrap piece of trim, a couple of drywall screws. I use number six on wood and drywall and all the stuff. And then just a level, make sure that everything is going on nice and straight. It's probably gonna be hard to see what I'm doing because the camera won't go that high, but just putting some screws into this board, then I'm gonna hang the frame on top of there and screw down from into the frame into the back of this board here and that'll hold it. So it's always best if you team lift. The TV's up, it's working, the frame is on it, the buffet's done. Maybe put like a mattress underneath or a couple of pillows so that way if it does happen to fall, it gets a soft landing. But you know, it wound up being a kind of expensive uh, mistake. Shout out to the people at Sam's Club today. They were super nice to us, gave an amazing deal on a floor model. So we're not paid to say that, but thank you Sam's Club. I think Moody Blue really matches the rug that we have going on here. So we'll link that rug because a lot of people asked about it. If you want to buy the paint products you today, you're going to go to Jamie RayVintage.com. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.